Marissa Robinson and happy Wine Therapy Wednesday. I am excited to talk about finding purpose today. I'm going to give the steps to help you find your purpose. I have had a few clients come to me recently about them wanting to know what their purpose is. How do they find their purpose? Why, why are they here on earth? What are they supposed to do? And a lot of times depression is a part of the, the journey of finding purpose because people are here and they feel like they have no reason to be here. I feel like I have nothing that I'm good at. I have no strength. I have no qualities. I have nothing to give to the world, but we all do. The thing is, we just got to know the steps. That's the biggest thing. What are the steps to finding what my purpose is? Purpose is something that each and every one of us has. Every one of us has something that we can give to this world, and we should share it with like-minded people who have the same passion that we have. We're going to get into it, though. We're going to get into it. So you know how we do. All right. The title of this show is Uncork Session 30, Finding Purpose. Welcome to all my new visitors, new family members. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And to everybody who's been here and been family, it's good to see you again. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. The first thing we, we are going to do is introduce the wine of the day. As I said before, for my birthday, I became a member of a wine club in... Um, Fredericksburg, which is like wine country in Texas here. And so the name of this um, company is called the Grape Creek Vineyards. And so I get a shipment every month. I love it. Amazing. Of course, it's all red wine. I said, I'm going to switch it up because I don't want to be boring with my blend or my taste buds or anything. So I'm going to do better with my life. All right. So this is a red, y'all already know, this is a red blend, but it's like a full body, which means it's bold. This is one of those bold, dry tasting wines. It's amazing. I had some last night actually with chocolate, red wine and chocolate, y'all. Bomb.com, okay? And I like dark chocolate, so you ain't got to do, you ain't got to go that far as I, because I go pretty far. You don't have to go that far. But, you know, it was, it's amazing. So this is really, really good. So make sure that everybody, y'all getting y'all wine glasses together. And this is called Invention. Uh, and it was done in 2021. And so it's a full body, as I stated, it's full. Um, very dry, very bold. It's bold, y'all. It ain't no weak. It ain't weak, okay? It ain't weak. All right. All right, so let's get to it. So get your wine glasses. Y'all know how we do. going to do our taste test. All right, so the first thing we do is that we see. So let's see what's in here, what colors you see. Of course, mine is bold. I see plum, purple, grapes, all dark color, too, for real. And I see, well... You can't see if you can smell it already, some of the wood. All right, so the next thing we do is we swirl. So after you see, you swirl a little bit because we want to open the aroma up of the wine, right? So let's open it up, get all those flavors out, get it, you know, make sure it's loud, make sure it's open before we taste it, okay? All right, so after you swirl a little bit, we're going to smell. It's your wine, so you put your nose in your wine glass because ain't nobody going to drink it after you, okay? You do it. It smells good. Okay, not sweet. This is really good, so I'm excited about that. And the next thing we do is sip. Sip. That's good. I can't drink too much on sip. That's real good right there. All right. So make sure y'all holding your glass by the stem, okay? Because I don't want you to do what I just did. I just held it by the glass. So don't do that. We hold our wine, uh, wine glass by the stem. That's the correct way to hold your wine glass. All right. So let's get into it, y'all. So we're talking about finding purpose and purpose is something that gives us happiness, gives us motivation. It gives us a desire to be here to fulfill what it is that we are here to do. Purpose gives us a sense of meaning, right? What's my purpose? Why am I here? What's my meaning? What can I give to the world? Um, and so that's a part of what our purpose is. And a lot of people who don't want to just exist and they want to live and have a fulfilling life, they try to figure out what their purpose is pretty early. And we start with figuring out what is our passion. So step number one, all right. So we're, gonna, we're wanting to identify what our passion is. Uh, one thing I've done, I wrote it down. One thing I've done, I did like a start a passion jar. You can be creative, it can be a box, it can be whatever you want it to be, a tablet. But write down things you're passionate about. Seriously, passion drives you to your purpose. So the first thing we start with is what are you passionate about? What are you like? That's my thing. That's my niche. I'm pa I like, I love doing that. I do it for free. And I tell people all the time, I will do therapy for free. Like I love helping people. My passion is to listen. My passion is to be there for another person in a communicative way in a way that we can verbal verbalize our feelings to each other, what we think, our thoughts, whatever. 
I love that. And my passion is really being here for people, really helping people in a way that it, it has communication involved. Um, so write down things you're passionate about. Write it down. Being there for others. I'm passionate about making, you know, helping people with their electronics. Like, that's my thing. Like, I love technology. Um, I like money. I like the count. I like the, I like the count the money that people don't want to count and make their life easy. Accountant, whatever that looks like, write down what your passion is. Write it down. Make you, and it could be more than one. Let's not be, come on, let's not limit ourselves. Your passion could be more than one thing. So I would ask that you start a jar, start a book, do something with your passion. Like write it down because you're going to have more than one, more than one thing that you like to do, one, more than one thing that you're passionate about, you'll give your all to. So I want you to write that down. All right, so the next step after you are working through finding what your passion is, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set goals. All right, so now we have identified what our passion is. What goals do I have to put in front of me for me to reach to fulfill my purpose with the passion that I found? And so one thing I can say when it comes to setting goals is like find you a mentor in that area. That was one thing I, I hate to say that I lacked that. Um, and like a couple years ago, I was like actually in my career field, like it, after I got my doctorate, that I was like trying to find a mentor to help me with, you know, the progress that I wanted to make in my life and the goals that I wanted to set as far as a private practice, um, nonprofit organization, groups for girls, like things like that. And I wanted to talk to someone who had already experienced it, someone that yeah, I felt like, oh, they inspire me, so let me get with them. They know what they're doing. Let me, you know, ask them to be my mentor. Well, I never did find that mentor, um, and I asked a few people, but I asked a few people, but I never did get a chance to follow up. So that was the ball that, you know, I dropped. But I think it is very vital to your growth and finding your purpose and passion um, after you find your passion is literally finding someone that inspires you in that area. You know, finding someone who has already took the course, they went that route you're trying to go, and that you're trying to get the suggestions or get the advice that you need. So literally finding a mentor. And the other thing is finding a community of like-minded individuals. The thing is, if my passion is what I do, therapy, um, it's nothing wrong with me getting with people who are in technology and I got all these like-minded friends, but we, they, they do technology and there's so it's only so much support they can give me with what I do. So one thing I would say is find that like-minded village, the people that got the same passion as you, we can build on each other's ideas. We can give each other advice. We can encourage each other. We know what our strengths are. We know what, you know, you learn from your your village, right? So you know who's good at what, who's not, who you can, you know, give a little advice to, help them strengthen their, you know, weaknesses in their area. So find the like-minded people. So as we are setting goals, two of the goals are to find a mentor, somebody who is even, it could be somebody like on TV, right? But you're following them. Like you're, you're following their work. You know, if you're somebody who want to be in television broadcast or whatever, and you looking at, you know, um, I think I ain't, I ain't going to say about next. I get it wrong. Let's not do that, okay? But one thing I can say is that you follow that person. You may not know them personally, but this is somebody you're looking up to and you're looking at their work like, yeah, I like that. That's something I want to get into. Um, and just find it. The next goal is finding like-minded people, people who have the same passion as you, same purpose as you, and that wants to do that as well. So that's step two. Step three is identify your strengths. We all have strengths, Okay. And that is something that we can use to build on. Our strengths are something that is there for us when we are feeling weak. We, okay, let me use this. This is my strength. I like to talk. Okay, talking is my strength. So when I'm in a hard spot, all I need to do is talk. If nothing else, talk. And another strength I have is li I can listen and be quiet the whole time and just look at you. That's a strength. Everybody cannot listen. Y'all know that. Like some people like tuning people out. They like rolling their eyes like, girl, you shut up. But for me, that's my strength. I can listen to somebody all day. All day. And I'm okay with it. Because I'm nosy. That's strength. I'm very no I'm a nosy individual. I get that from my family on my mama's side. So <laughs> so when it comes to like wanting to know about people, that is a strength. 
that I have. I'm from the South. We hospitable. We want to know. We, we swear. We swear. We know everybody. We happy. We, you know, lively. So a part of that is me having that strength coming from where I'm from. I'm trying to know all about your life. And I probably know some of your people because I talked to them and somehow I connected the dots. So, um, so what are your strengths? Identify what your strengths are. I know mine. I've been knowing mine for a couple of years now. Since I was a teenager or before, like I know that I can sit and listen to somebody talk all day. And I can talk all day. People used to get off the phone with me back in the day because I talked too much. And I, the, the, the conversation probably was jumping from subject to subject, but I wanted to talk. <laughs> it had it in me to get out. So that's my strength. Um, so what's yours? You just identify what it is. And if you don't know, remember I told y'all, that like-minded village, people that, you know, we got the same income and the same passion. We're around each other, learning from each other every day. Sometimes when we don't know our strength, they know it. They can point out to you, this is something you're good at, when sometimes we can't find it ourselves. I can honestly say that. Um, and a lot of times, because we doubt ourselves, we doubt our abilities, we don't see our strengths. We don't see our passions, our purpose, because we have a sense of depression that's going on and self-doubt and being critical towards ourselves that we don't see the good that we have in us and we don't see the capabilities that we have in us. So sometimes it does help to let somebody else point it out because we can't see it. We got a blind eye right now. But somebody who's not experiencing what we're experiencing, it could be something that's totally opposite of finding purpose that's giving you a blind eye to what you are looking for. Because, you know, you can't focus on two or three two or three things at once. If I'm dealing with something personal that has nothing to do with purpose, uh, finding my purpose may be the last thing I'm thinking about. I may, you know, I may not have that, that eye right now. So lean on those people that are around you. Family, family, like your close family, they've been around you long enough. They know what your strengths are. They can tell you what you're passionate about when sometimes you can't. You Like, am I for real? I do that. Yeah, you do that every time these people come over here. This is what you do. Every time I, you the person I call when I got to figure out a problem. You, you the problem solver, you know. You the person that got the answers. You the connector. You the broker. You the real, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to look at that stuff. And when we think about, um, just going back to passion. Let's go back to it just for a little bit. When you're thinking about passion, you being the person that connect anybody, Think about, I'm the person that could, that like to connect people, then why don't I be a broker or I be a realtor or I'm a social worker that does the, the um, connections, like I connect y'all, you know? We think, think outside the box. Don't think just one or two things, but think about something that you really would enjoy connecting people to. Oh, I'm going to connect you to this business. I got you. I know this person. I know this person. I know people who know everybody, and I'd be like, How? Do you know all these people in different places in their lives? Like, this person live here, they live, and you know them, and you connected them with just one phone call. That's a gift, y'all. That's a gift. So when you think about passion, thinking about, think about what you would like to do with that passion. I know I like to talk, and I know I like to solve people's problems, so I knew therapy was it. I started with social work. I knew. Yeah, I'm, I'm the girl for the job, which I need. You know, I want to fix everything. That's me. I want to make sure everybody's happy. You know, and it used to, it, it used to be um, looked at as a weakness because I would just pour so much into people. But then I'm like, no, that's a strength. It's only weakness when I don't pour into myself and I pour into everybody else. But I do both, all right? Because I'm going to pour into me before I pour into you. Because without me pouring into myself, I can do nothing for you. So, with that being said, it's all a strength. It's all a strength. So, Going back to what we were saying. Identify your strengths. The next thing we're going to do after you, you know, figure out what your passion is, right? You're doing a passion journal, box, jar, putting everything you're passionate about, just writing it down, cutting it up, putting it somewhere so that you can go back to it and just bring it all out. So we're trying to figure out, identify what our passion is. The next thing is setting goals. Setting goals, you know, setting the goals to find a mentor in this area that I'm passionate about. If I'm passionate about art and I love to draw, I love to make things beautiful, then my mentor may be somebody who works at an art school or someone who, to be honest, and I've seen it, someone who is no longer here that has work, beautiful work, um, that's here, that's paintings that everybody buys, things like that. I follow their footsteps. I follow what they did or, I, you know, go to the places that they've been, talk to the people they talk to if they're still here. So mentor. And then the next thing is finding that village. All right, third step, 
identifying what your strengths are. Your strengths matter when it comes to you finding your purpose at the passion, all right? So what are your strengths? What are things that you know you're good at? Like this is something that's gonna carry me. It's gonna carry me if don't nothing that's carry me. My strength, if I lose one job, bitch, I get another one with the same strength. I, I promise you I'm gonna have a job, all right? <laughs> the next step is creating a vision. What is the vision after you sat down and you put all that on paper? You figured out, I know what my passion is. What is the vision for it? You know, my husband laughs at me a lot because I always tell him when I watch this movie, I remember seeing her at her desk. She was a therapist. And it was just like God was speaking to me like, that's it. And it was a, I cannot remember the name of that movie, but um, it was Pandora's Box, but I can't remember when trios or whatever. I, had, I don't know, I was too young watching it, but I watched it. But um, I was watching that, and it's the girl that played on... Um, Ah, oh, Players Club, I think. Players Club. So the little cousin that came to visit. On the, in this movie, she was an actual therapist for a crime scene. Um, she would like work with the FBI. They'll call her in to do like crisis intervention. And it just spoke to me. I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to help. I want to talk to people. I want to make people feel better. You know, I want to let them know they got the answers in them. They can do this. Your life ain't never going to end. Like you don't have to be sad because I want everybody to be happy, right? But after watching that, that became my vision. I created my vision off of what I saw because I knew that's what I wanted. And I was very young watching that movie. Don't nobody judge me, okay? You need to keep your mind on the, the purpose of me watching them, okay, what I got from it. But um, when I saw it, I knew. I was like, I'm gonna be a therapist, I'm gonna have my own practice. Like, I was so young and I knew exactly what I wanted. You know, I knew that was it. Like, I'm going to be a therapist. I'm going to have my own office. I'm going to help clients. I'm going to be sitting behind the desk. You know, you're young. That's all you think about. Oh, I got my desk. I got this. You know, but not really thinking about the full work itself. But creating a vision, you know. And one thing we can do with creating a vision, we do vision boards. Of course, y'all know that, right? Um, you do, they're called mood boards. Mood boards now, I got new names for it. You have that, you have like journal. You have purpose journals now. Write down your purpose in your journal. Write down what it looks like, what you feel like when you think about it. If you ever seen it before, put it all on paper. Y'all write down, write the stuff down, make it plain. Seriously, seriously, create the vision. If I'm gonna do art, am I doing anime art? Am I doing, um, flower art. What, what kind of art am I doing? You know what I'm saying? If that's my pet, like I can't just say, oh, I'm doing art. I can't, like personally, I can't just say, yeah, I'm doing therapy because I'm just helping people know I do therapy and I specialize in suicide prevention and depression. I have a certain area that I go in. This is what I do. I love working with teenagers. That's my thing. But I work with everybody and I do everybody, but I know my specialty. If it, if it had to come down to it, that is what I'm doing. I'm helping people not commit suicide, break suicidal ideation, break depression and anxiety. And I'm working with teens, right? So I want you, when you write in that vision, specifically have a lane for it. Because if it's too broad, then you kind of lose focus on what you're supposed to be doing, okay? So make sure that you write down exactly what it is you want to do. What's your specialty? What's your thing? I know mine. I know who I do therapy for every day. I know what I specialize in. I know my lane. And if I, if I have clients that come to me outside of my lane, I refer them. I don't treat them. And it's the same with you with your passion and your purpose. If that ain't your purpose, let them tell y'all something. Don't be stepping on toes of somebody else's purpose because you feel like, oh, they're doing better than me. And stay in your lane. Do your purpose. Right now, what you're doing your purpose, it may not look like it's unfolding the way you want it to. The money may not be right there, but you're not doing it for the money. Okay, we all need money. But you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it to fulfill your purpose here. To have a, you know, fulfill your well-being, your happiness. Money will come. Nothing just starts off with just, oh, I'm flowing with money right now. It doesn't do that. And don't look at somebody else's destination or what am I trying to say stability of their purpose and try to move out of your lane going to theirs that don't work do not follow somebody else's purpose and their passion because you see what the rewards they are getting if you stay on task with what yours are you'll get your reward too remember that 
All right, so after creating your vision, after you know exactly what it is that's yours, nobody else's, um, the next thing I want you to do is consider what you care about. What do I care about the most? You know, I care about kids because I feel like with kids, we can change the world when we start with them. They're easy to work with. Their mindset can change easily, things like that. So I love working with children. You know, and so that's who I care about. I care, I care about my teens for sure. Um, so think about what is it that you care about? What difference can you make with what you have? What difference can you make with your passion? Don't, you know, don't limit what you have. Don't limit your passion, your purpose to just, ah, oh, maybe this will work. No, because what's yours can be a definite gift to the world. So think about what difference can you make with what you have, with your passion and your purpose and your strengths. What difference can you make? What can you bring to the table? What is it that you care about most with this gift? That helps you figure it out as well. And the last step is to embrace the challenges. I was just talking about the money part. I feel, I feel like that's like, a part of me feels like that is the most difficult or the most challenging is the finances. I, I just feel like we all feel like, man, I'm supposed to have that money and I ain't making no money, but I love what I do and I don't want to do it no more. I think I need to do something else because I ain't no money. And I have seen people go to school, child. I done seen people go to school, get a degree and say, ain't no money in it, so I'm moving to something else. But that's what they really love to do. All they had to do was like take a risk. All they had to do was take a risk, do it, be happy with it, and watch things unfold to where you financially are able. But because we are so, you know, we money hungry, we're very impatient. Okay, that ain't going to work. Very impatient. And we just don't have tolerance, especially the new generation. They're quitting a heartbeat. So with that, if you're a quitter and you feel like you don't have the patience, then you're kind of, you're hurting yourself and what you have worked hard for. So I know that things can come up, challenges, you know, you're trying to get in. I'm trying to get in this art school and I've been denied three times. Don't give up. That's a challenge, right? You're going to face challenges. With that, you need to be self-aware on how you work through your challenges. What do I need to do? What are my coping skills? Who are my support system? Who do I talk to in this moment? Because this is life and life going to be life but I'm not going to stop with what my purpose and passion is because right now it is not unfolding the way I want it to. So embrace the challenges, know that the reward is coming and that the biggest thing is that you found your purpose and that you can go fulfill it and be happy. You can be full, you know, you, you, you feel like well-rounded, like you're doing what you are here to do and it's easy. The hard part is the challenges, but the work itself, it can be so easy, nothing to it. So don't be afraid to face the challenges. Remember. When you're going through tough things in your life, you don't have to go through it by yourself. I say this so much. Your support system is there for a reason. Just them giving you a small, encouraging quote, motivational, you know, a little, they can text you something motivational. They can give you a pick me up for the day, for the week, for the month. You need them in this moment. Because you're doing something that most of us are trying to get to, right? Getting to our purpose, really doing what we are here to do. You get there, you're going to face challenges. It's not for you to give up. It is nowhere near, it's not for you to give up. It's for you to keep going. And know that it was all done the way it was supposed to. And your work is not in vain. It'll pay off. So, with that being said, I hope that you all take this time to use these steps to um, find your purpose. What is your purpose? I want to find my purpose. I want to know what I'm here for. Um, and don't let depression win. Nope. When you feel like I have no reason to be here on this earth, yeah, everybody does. You take these steps and you figure out what's yours. What's, what is my purpose? What am I here to do? I want you to do that. So I hope that this helps today. I hope that you all get a chance to find your purpose, follow your passion, and know that the reward is on the other side. Until next time, let's talk about it.